Dr. Fitz here with the last section of Chapter E, Uses of the Dell Operator. I would like to show you a few examples of how this marvelous operator can be used, which will give you a better understanding of what is going on with the operator. It's an operator in vector calculus, and it likes to do something to what's on the right-hand side. Well, let's first of all consider a scalar field. A scalar field has no direction. It's just simply a function of x, y, and z in, in the general case in three dimensions. And if you apply the del operator to a scalar field, you move that scalar field in to each of these derivatives. You get the derivative of the scalar field with respect to x, i hat, the derivative of the scalar field with respect to y, j hat, and the derivative of the scalar field with respect to z, k hat. You have a vector here. So this operation is called the gradient. You are looking at the change in the scalar field in the x, y, and z directions. And that's what the gradient is. You get a vector function when the del operator operates or acts on a scalar function. Here's a couple or three examples. Here's, I think, a third one here. And let's apply the uh, gradient to find the gradient, let's apply the del operator to this function f. These are practice problems, but let's do some of them. The answer would be 2x i hat plus 2y j hat plus 2z k hat. Notice that the derivatives of these last two with respect to x give nothing. How about this one? Well, derivative with respect to x would be 2y plus 0 for i hat. It'll be 2x plus z squared for the one that hits the j hat. And it will be 2yz for what hits the k hat. Uh, this one here, 2x becomes 2. Derivative of, of 2x with respect to uh, x is 2 and no x dependence here. This becomes 6y and this becomes the cosine of z. Another thing we can do is the divergence. We already have seen this. Here the vector operator operates as a dot product on a vector and you get a scalar. Now let's uh, do uh, one of these, at least do one. What is the uh, first component here? It's the derivative of the first component with respect to x. And then we're going to add that to these others. So this is a 1. dx dx is a 1. So we're thinking components down here, a vector, and here we're just thinking of just adding everything together. So this is not a vector up here, it's just a sum. But these came from derivatives of components down here. So that's 1, 1, 1. The answer is 3. Now let's look at this one. 2x plus 2y plus 2z. How about this one? Minus sine of x plus cosine y. Just remember you have a scalar here. No vector components up here. You have a sum of derivatives that came from taking derivatives of the respective components down into vectors, but this is a scalar. And last, this curl. The curl is an operation that gives you a vector and here is the nice i hat j hat k hat way to look at this nice little practice problem to do is go ahead and use this to show that indeed it reproduces the cyclic relation that i showed you earlier as another way of remembering the curl as a cross product and some practice problems go ahead and uh, takes uh, the curl of these three vectors.